Hi there, <clears throat> I'm Black Bright and today I am aiming this video at my fellow West Indians, in particular Jamaicans, because Jamaicans have this, usually have this no problem man attitude, attitude and it can be used against them, especially when it comes to immigration, the rules, legislation. Um, really need to take a stock because your no problem man can be a real problem when it comes to planning, organising, regimen, discipline. It can be a problem. Taking your time, being lackadaisical. Now there is, an, there is a part of, don't get it me wrong, there's a part of Jamaican that's very vigilant, very astute, very disciplined when in a working situation, in a situation where they're making money or they need to make money, they can be very focused. But when it comes to form filling and documentation and legislation, they can, they can fall back there and the government can take advantage of this. So um, what am I saying? Um, I want, you, you know, if, if you're going to complete um, any kind of forms, you need to be prepared, you need to be focused, you need to have all the documentation, you need to have the evidence, and don't think, oh yeah, I'm going to give, if they ask for six months um, bank statements, don't think oh, I've given them five, it doesn't matter about the six one, it does. When they say bank statements and pay slips, correlating pay slips for exactly the same months, that is what they mean. It doesn't mean, oh yeah, I've given them January, February, March. Okay, it doesn't really matter. I've got April. They can tell that June and July are, you know, from the same company, blah, blah. No, you can't do it that way. You cannot make any assumptions. It can get you into trouble. It can lead you to losing money. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is preparation. If you know your visa is going to run out, in six months time, you start your preparation from now. Don't think, oh, well, I've got three or four months left. I'm going to do it. I'll start it in June, July, because you don't know what hiccups they're going to be. You don't know if the systems are going to be down. You don't know if something's going to get lost in the post. So something like bank statements. The banks only keep up to six years. You might just need six months. Even if you need six months, it might take a while for the bank to process it because they're doing online applications now. Now, the UK is supposed to be going green, and yet the Home Office is still asking for hard copies. Um, so you're going to need to put in a letter to the bank and ask them for the six months covering the period that you need. OK, and all your pay slips, you need to keep hold of them. Now, things are exacerbated with the online application because they're not doing the paper forms anymore. But hopefully you can download some, get them printed off so you can actually get someone or get some help in completing the hard copy forms so that when you transfer it onto the online document, it's not so difficult to follow. Now, online, you know, a lot of people, they are not savvy with IT and that, that that is another disadvantage, another vehicle whereby you can be held back, you can lose your, um, your right to stay in the country because you're not equipped um, technically. It's not necessarily your fault because, you know, we've never had to um, get involved in technology, especially the older folks. Now they're having forced to be having to use credit cards, debit cards, um, questions online. <clears throat> you know, you can't call up um, the Inland Revenue and speak to a person very easily. You know, all, all everything you need now is done automated, is automated and it's online. So God forbid you have problems reading and writing. You're up the shit, you're up the creek without a paddle. So um, you will need somebody to help you who's articulate and who has some savvy when you're completing the forms. With regard to any telephone inquiries, you're just going to have to wade that through. And the thing is, they've also made it difficult that way as well, because when you call these organisations, you, you're paying goodness knows how much a minute. Sometimes it's 45p a minute. It could be up to a pound a minute. And then you're kept hanging on for so long. So anyway, I'm going off course here. 
So the first thing is preparation. You've got your bank statements. You've got all the documents. You, if you're applying, if you're applying, if you're sponsoring a spouse or a child, you make sure you've got your you, your earning net eighteen thousand six hundred. That is after tax and everything's been taken off, and you can show that you've got six months worth of that. Um, there cannot be no gaps if you had time off or if you changed an employer. You're still going to have to cover that. So just make sure that that's in order. Um, what else? Bank statements I've spoken of. I've said that they have to be original, so you have to get them from the, the bank. Um, sometimes you might need um, documents from your home country that are not familiar in the UK. So they're going to have to be notarised and um, evidenced as um, authentic copies. If you do get, I don't think they're going to accept... Um, um, copies of anything but you know you can call and find out if a verified or original you know notarized copy is acceptable but don't just send it in without finding out first um, you, you know if you're applying for um, further leave to remain on the basis of your family you don't just put you don't just fill up the form and put all the documents together you have to have a statement. They have to know what the reason is. And then your documents are to evidence the statement that you've written. So it's no point just putting a form, putting all the applicants in and everything like that. In a covering letter, or there might be a section in the form that says um, any additional information, take advantage of that to explain your case. Um, yeah, don't assume that they know what you're talking about. You, you're dealing mostly with legal minds and there's no room for negotiation. Everything is quite rigid. You know, you, you have to put in dates. You have to put time. Well, not times, but you have to put in dates and you have to write it out clearly. So there's no room for misinterpretation. So it doesn't have to be convoluted. It could even be bullet points, but it needs to be clearly stated. It needs to be succinct. It needs to be um, contemporaneous. That means it needs to be in date order, you know. So I'm telling you, it's not an easy, it's not an easy road. Anyway, don't let's go there. Um, yeah, when you're thinking about submitting with a deadline, I did brush across it in the introduction, but, you know, some people think because they've got six months down the line, they're going to wait until the last two months and then if something goes wrong or they need to um, submit it at short notice, they haven't got all the information, they're rushing the documents, they don't have all the, document all the documentation, they don't have time to look at things and get things checked over. Some people wait until it's too late to go and get an attorney to look over the forms. I think for an attorney to look over the forms, it's only about 150 quid or something. It's worth getting um, a second eye, you know, or somebody, don't have to, you know, somebody who, you know, is quite savvy with forms and stuff. Get them to look over it for you and make sure that everything is attached. Everything you've written in the right columns. You're using the right form. It's so easy to be misled or to misinterpret something. I often say, you know, about the Bible, people read the Bible and everybody gets their own interpretation from it. It's a bit like the immigration rules. Make sure that what you're reading is what it says. Um, so plan way in advance, you know, when you're going to complete the forms. Um, like I said, if you are, com well, you have to complete it online now. So make sure if you can get a printed copy or print it off or something. Um, I think you can do this in libraries. You know, there is an option. I think it only costs 40p to use their printer for a copy. It's very, very cheap. And then you can take your time and complete the hard copy. That's why I said you need plenty of time. Complete the hard copy and then you can transfer that information onto the online copy, knowing that everything is correct. Um, what else? Yeah, like I said, you know, there's no substitute. You know, you can't get away with a laissez-faire attitude. Um, people and those people that are behind those desks 
are not looking, they're not seeking compassion. There is, there's a no appeals procedure. So if you've made a mistake, you can't go and appeal and say, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. I didn't realize. You can't do that. It has to be correct first time. That's why it's important to get second opinion, even third opinions. Make sure that it's done properly. Um, like I said, financial inquirements, and that is mandatory. The 18, you know, the proof that you, if you are sponsoring somebody, that is mandatory. You can't say, okay, I've done five months. It's a bit like the bank statements. Oh, I've got five, um, five weeks. And 18,600, for those of you who are not good at maths, translates into 600, 360 pounds a week. That's how much you need to be having in your hand. 360 pounds a week. And it has to be on a pay slip to prove that it's legally um, or self-employed. Whichever way you do it, it has to be documented. If you're self-employed, you have to have proof from inland revenue, things like that. So everything is above board because you cannot get away with anything there's no leniency there's none so don't think you can think oh yeah you know like me and you or your husband or your wife or a friend you might say oh yeah I forgot that and they say oh don't worry about it even at work they'll do that you miss something they say, oh don't worry about it you can put it in afterwards no that doesn't work that doesn't work in this situation um I think you should look at it as a learning as a development learning program for those of you who have been a bit lackadaisical, um, not disciplined, laid back and have this no problem on attitude, it's an opportunity for you to be disciplined, to be focused, to be vigilant in what you're doing. It's difficult. I know it's a difficult change, but that is what you're going to need to do provided. I mean, this, of course, is providing it's not too late and you're not an overstayer, of course. Because over stairs, there's not much chance to get through unless, like I say, extenuating circumstances. Um, and remember, when you're looking for original documents, companies tend not to keep their documents for longer than six years. So I'm not quite sure what happens there. Um, and also, there's parts where they say the date of your, the date you left, your, left your employment, the date of your first job, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, a lot of us won't remember. I mean, I remember my first job. I wouldn't remember the date, but I remember the year. And that's only because you know there's certain things that happen as you go through your life. We, you know, like. Um, Ah, landmarks. We have certain landmarks or milestones in our lives that make us remember. So if there are any milestones that would help you recall at least the year you were um, in a certain job or you left a certain job, because those are kind of things that you'll find in the um, in some of the forms. The test, you know, that good character thing. That's, there's going to be a test for that. So, you know, and even sometimes, even if you've done something wrong, as long as you've admitted to it, you might get through. But if you don't admit to it, it and they find out, you know, you've negated everything and you've lost your money. So, um, tests of good character, it can include debts, county court judgments, traffic offences, even little things like that you need to admit and just pray to God that everything will work in your favour. And I hope you found this useful. Bye-bye.